Well, welcome back to the Algebra 2 Jungle, where we're just a few lessons away from wrapping up our statistics chapter. And tonight we're going to focus on evaluating reports based on data from a sample. And we're going to look at a lot of things that might either appear in the newspaper or on the news, in a magazine, and so forth, and, and really dive into some real life examples. And here's just one example of something that we're going to dive into tomorrow in class. And we took this out of our recent newspaper article, and it says the election for governor is still more than a year away, but a new poll shows that the race is already already close. The Republican governor had 47% and the Democratic challenger had 45% in a poll released Tuesday of 800 voters. Quote, that's within the poll's margin of error of 3.5 percentage points, making it essentially a toss-up, said the poll's director. And we're going to tackle a whole bunch of questions related to this, but ultimately we're trying to get to this big question. How reliable is this data? Okay, How accurate can we expect it to be? Um, you know, they claim 45% for the Democratic challenger, but is it possible that he's actually got 55% of the support out there throughout the state? Um, and so forth. And we're going to really get into margin of error and talk about where did this 3.5 come from? How do they pick 3.5? Why not 4? Why not 6? Why not 2? And so forth. So a real quick uh, recap and summary of where we've been the last few days as we get ready to launch into this new lesson here today. And then the first one says that we've learned that we can determine a margin of error by finding the standard deviation of a simulated sampling distribution and multiplying by what? Yeah, hopefully you just said 2 to yourself. So we got to multiply the standard deviation by 2. And let's go ahead and see if we can fill those in. So we can um, determine a margin of error by finding the standard deviation of a simulated sampling distribution and multiplying by 2. So we're going to keep it really, really simple. Just got to multiply the standard deviation by 2. Our next one says, when the margin of error is either added to or subtracted from the mean of the sampling distribution, approximately 95% of the simulated samples will be included in the what we call the confidence interval. All right, let's see what this looks like. When the margin of error is either added to or subtracted from the what? The mean of the sampling distribution approximately 95 percent of the simulated samples will be included in the confidence interval confidence interval boom there it is number three if a value falls outside of this confidence interval, the value is probably not the actual population proportion or population mean. In fact, we are 95% sure of this. Notice we said probably right here. We didn't necessarily give a stone cold lock on it. We just said we're really, really confident that it's not. So if a value falls outside of this confidence interval, the value is probably not the actual population proportion or the population mean. Those are the two big things we're trying to find within the population. We are 95% sure of this. So there's really only a 5% chance that it could uh, fall outside of our confidence interval. Now a quick recap of what we've done in class We've performed two major simulations in class. The first one we did was when we did the bean counting and we were drawing, the, um, we had this brown paper bag and there was a combination of uh, black beans and white beans and we were trying to figure out what the proportion of black beans was. So when we did our bean counting, what we were trying to do is use these samples to approximate or estimate what the uh, population's proportion of black beans was. And then the second major simulation was when we did the, the jelly blubber fish. So we'll, re we'll refresh our minds there the, with the jelly blubbers. And what were we actually trying to do that day? What we were trying to do, we were trying to estimate the population's mean or average length of the jelly blubbers. So those are the two big things that we use our samples for is either to try to find the population's proportion of in that case, black beans, or the population's mean or the average length of the jelly blubbers. 
Recently, a newspaper in a large city asked 500 men the following question. Do you regularly watch SportsCenter? And out of the 500 men in the survey, 340 of them responded yes, with a standard deviation of 0.041. Interestingly, worth this is worth noting, is that it, on, on our final exam, they've guaranteed that they will give us the standard deviation, or, or it'll be a list of data that we can plug into L1 and L2 and then calculate it from there. Um, but we'll always have a way of finding that. First things first, we want to find a sample proportion of men that responded yes. So I'm just going to take the 340 that responded yes and divide that by 500. And that gives me a proportion of 0.68. So about 68% of the men surveyed responded yes. And I had, I had to point out my good friend Ron Burgundy here making a guest appearance on SportsCenter. Always makes me laugh. Um, let's see. Now, what was the margin of error? What was our margin of error? Well, all we're going to do is we're going to take that standard deviation and multiply it by 2. And that's going to give us a margin of error of 0 0.082. So we could be off by 0 0.082 percentage points in either direction, either a little higher or a little low. Now, based on this one sample of 500 men, we're 95% confident, or 95% sure that the population proportion is within what interval? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of come up with an upper limit and a lower limit. And let's see, I'm going to take my proportion of 0.68 and I'm going to add my margin of error. And that's going to give me 0.762. And then I'm going to take my proportion and I'm going to subtract the margin of error to get a lower limit. And so my lower limit's 0.598. So we're 95% sure that the population's proportion falls somewhere between 59.8% and 76.2%. And more than likely, it's really close to 68%. However, we want to try to um, do an even better job because, in our opinion, that margin of error that we just had in the last example feels a little high. You know, we were kind of basically saying plus or minus 8.2% in either direction. So we said, you know, 500 people is a lot of people, but could we do better? And so we ran a simulation of a thousand different samples, not just one, but a thousand different samples, and each of those samples was, had a sample size of 500. And we used that 0.68 that we just had as our sample proportion. The results are shown below, including the mean and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. How does the margin of error using the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, which is this rascal right here, compare to the margin of error we found earlier using only a single sample? And I think your common sense is going to do you well here to say, you know what, once we use more simulations, our accuracy is going to improve. So I'm going to take my standard deviation and I'm going to multiply it by 2. And now I'm saying my margin of error is 0 0.042, which is really probably twice as good as what it was on the last one. And we'll say it was this margin of error is much, much better than it was when we only used one single sample. Oops. And one sample. And of course, the more simulations we can run and the more sample sizes of 500 we reuse, the better that standard deviation and therefore that margin of error is going to get. And just one more last effort to try to tie it in with what we did on the last slide. Remember, um, we just said we, we said we were 95% confident that the true population proportion of men that watch SportsCenter is somewhere between... Um, 59.8% and 76.2% and look at out of a thousand samples every single one of the thousand samples fell somewhere within those two bounds and so um, so it's pretty darn true in fact we noticed that uh, certainly the tallest stacks seem to be centered around 0.68 which is our sample proportion before we dive into our last themed question here tonight, I want to introduce you to a fellow by the name of George Gallup. And this is a, a cover from a Time magazine, I believe, from either 1946 or 1948, roughly around there. And um, 
he is still considered a, the pioneer or the godfather of all of our modern techniques for uh, conducting a sound and trustworthy survey or poll. In fact, if you go back a few more years, we had studied the 1936 presidential campaign where the then popular magazine called the Literary Digest had wrongly predicted that Roosevelt would have been defeated handily in that election. In the same time that they were um, running a, a, a very bad poll, uh, George Gallup was a startup and uh, he conducted a much smaller poll uh, that consisted only of about 50,000 people compared to the Literary Digest 2.4 million. However, he had correctly predicted that Roosevelt would win that election and his his prediction was within um, one percentage point of the actual results. Just incredible accuracy for such a small sample size. And we recently went to his website and uh, one of the particular polls caught my attention. I thought it might pertain to to our generation here. Um, so companies are looking for intellectual talent that can meet the challenges of this quickly evolving business landscape. The global war for talent is heating up as human capital is becoming a competitive advantage for companies fighting to stay profitable. And here's a recent headline published by the Gallup Poll and see if you, we basically want to see if this is a good headline for the data that then follows. If the U.S. fails to develop a more talented workforce, it will fall behind other countries. Now, do you think that's a good headline, considering considering that during the poll, 78% of Americans that participated in the poll believe that the U.S. needs to develop more talent with a standard deviation of 0 0.019? I think that's a great headline, considering that it was such a um, definitive, um, you know, significant majority of Americans that believe that. Now, here are some of the survey methods, and again, these are still, and this blows me away, that... Uh, you know, some 80 some years later, we're still using his methods as the gold standard. So the results are based on telephone interviews conducted in uh, early July 2015 with a random sample of 1,001 or 1,010 adults. And the key is the the secret to his success has been how they go about developing that random sample. Okay, uh, they pulled them from all 50 U.S. states in the District of Columbia for, uh, for result, results based on this sample of national adults. The margin of sampling errors plus or minus four percentage points at a 95% confidence interval. So let's see if we can calculate the margin of error using our method of just doubling the standard deviation. So if we were to double the 0 0.019, what we're going to get is we're going to end up with um, 0 0.038. And what you'll notice, if we did convert that to a percentage, that would be 3.8%, which turns out, and I guess this is where the next question is going, how do our results of 3.8% compare with the margin of error stated in the article? And what we're going to say is it's very close. Uh, we're basically saying 3.8 versus the plus or minus 4% they listed, and we'll say it's very close. Now, they've probably got some, a lot more detail going into theirs, um, but for our simplicity and our model of just doubling the standard deviation, it's very, very close. All right. This next question is the real kicker, and I think should be probably the most important one of the video. Uh, interpret the statement, the margin of sampling error is plus or minus four percentage points, as they claimed. Okay, and here's how I interpret that statement. Now, if you recall, they had said that 78% of Americans believe that we need to develop more talent within the workforce. And if we um, created an interval, that would, you know, if I subtracted um, four percentage points, 78 minus four, I'd get 74%. Or if I did 78 plus four, I'd end up with 82%. So how are we going to interpret the statement? We're going to say we are... 95% confident that the population percent that believes we need to develop more talent is between 74 and 82 percent of Americans. 
we're 95% confident that the true population percentage is between 74 and 82. And last but not least, what do you think would have happened to the margin of error if the Gallup poll had only surveyed 200 people instead of 1,010? Now, still, you know, based on the techniques they used to get a random sample, 200 still wouldn't be terrible. But what do you think would happen? Again, your common sense is going to come in handy here. Basically, what the first thing is going to happen is our standard deviation is going to increase. In other words, we're going to have more variability. And once our standard deviation increases, our margin of error is going to increase as well. Margin of error will increase. Of course, once the sample size goes down, we're opening up a can of worms to really um, run into some, you know, r real bad samples, I guess. And it's just increasing our margin of error. You know, and it might have went from plus or four plus or minus four percentage points up to like, you know, plus or minus six, plus or minus eight, or even higher.